my story. How long is your tape? scary, it just didn't feel safe at all. Something just didn't sit right with me, so I kind of stayed alert, well, I stayed awake all night anyway. I was really bad yesterday, I got very, got very upset yesterday, it's really lonely. I felt so sad yesterday, I mean, broke down a couple of times. I thought I knew it all and went through college and dropped out of college and decided after I crashed my father's car on the night of my 21st that my bad luck was all from being in Ireland and that I'd have better luck elsewhere, that my problems would stay behind me when I'd leave. And on the eve before I was to leave, I took a brain hemorrhage and woke up six months later in Germany for a couple of months and saved up for an old Volkswagen camper van and drove all around Eastern Europe. And uh, then met a girl from Austria and I opened a bar there and it got kind of a lot of notoriety. It became famous very quick because of the atmosphere I set in it. Because I was a bit of a party animal. And and thing went in the bar and it was a pretty crazy place. It was some of the stunts they used to pull in the set and fire at the counter. And I used to DJ and I was pretty all out and out guy, party guy. And I was young at the time, I was 22, and I was headhunted by different bar companies throughout Europe. And I settled for Paris. I successfully managed the bar out there. As a result, I went on to open seven, eight bars and a flagship bar beside the Moulin Rouge. And uh, very successful. And worked hard and partied hard. In the seven years I worked, I never took one sick day. I used to finish work every night and just go drinking on the brasseries and bring, met loads of friends and went to loads of gigs and met loads of famous people and partied with them. and had a really good time and uh, I fell in love with a beautiful, beautiful Irish French girl and uh, we had a child and we were so madly in love and life was great. We went to a rave one night and I took a pill, ecstasy and I kind of got into the club scene a bit too much as opposed to DJing I was close to going clubbing, taking pills, getting off my head and I used to start going to the clubs on my own and that really upset my girlfriend and one night I came home from the, after finishing the bar and she, she didn't want me to go to the club, she wanted to stay in and I got quite aggressive and I hit her and I never hit a girl before in my life and I was really pissed off and I ended up going out that night but I didn't go to a club, I just went drinking and I came back and I, I realized that my drinking and my drug use had got out of control and that I had to do something about it. And uh, I did, and I proposed her. Nine months later, we had a baby boy, a beautiful baby boy, David. One Thursday morning, I got up to feed David and I found him uh, dead, caught death, uh, respiratory, it was a respiratory issue. Um, 
um, I subsequently had a breakdown and started drinking really heavy again and didn't go through the grieving process properly. Came back here to this country, went into psychiatric care and didn't like the psychiatric, like the drugs they were giving me to calm me down. It didn't work for me. I was in and out of numerous stints in rehab. Nothing really worked for me and I just couldn't hold down a job and couldn't go back to France because of bad memories and just been homeless for the last four years. I haven't drank in seven years. If I was still drinking, I wouldn't be talking to you guys. I'd probably be dead. They're addicts and they need money for drugs and they come out and they put a blanket over them, a sleeping blanket over them and let on their homeless and they're not. So, as the, there is a lot of homeless people, yeah sure there's a lot of homeless people, but not as many as they made out, you know. It kind of keeps you stuck in a rut like, you know, and that's exactly what homelessness is, it's a rut. I became homeless through my alcoholism really and recklessness and overspending and self-indulgence. My name is Tom.